TV. But you'll have to tune in to Fox on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. to see our guest who's joining us now, Chef Renicia Connerly. She is battling for one of the top spots on Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen, and she's kicking butt and taking names. So welcome, Chef. Hello, thank you for having me, Miss Rebecca. And hey, Miss Tippy. Congratulations, girlfriend. Congratulations. Thank you so much. It's, it's such an amazing experience, especially, you know, from this great state of ours. I'm going to say great because everybody in the other 49 states think we're the bottom of the barrel and this and that, but we got something to say and we got some talent here. We do, especially when it comes to cooking and our skills under pressure in the kitchen. And I say we by meaning you and all the other great chefs that come from this state. Absolutely. <laughs> because it does take a lot of talent. And I love how I think uh, Gordon Ramsay said it takes a person with the right ingredients to make it even this far in the competition. So for those who may not know the structure of Hell's Kitchen, in terms of a competition show for chefs. How do you kind of explain it to, to everyone? So um, I guess I'll give a backstory on it really quick. So we all auditioned. Um, they picked 18 of us out of 100,000, like thousands, hundreds of thousands of applicants. So that's amazing in itself to be one of 18 talented chefs picked out of hundreds of thousands. Like who would have thought? So that's a big thing in itself. So um we're on there. You have to compete in the challenges, and you also have to pass through some successful dinner service. And that keeps working your way up. And I know there's actually, it's not just like a small check on the line. Like, if you win this thing, it's a pretty uh, hefty, life-changing grand prize. So what's on the line here? So we're competing for $250,000 and a spot as the executive chef of Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen in Las Vegas. Woo! Ooh, that would look good on a resume, wouldn't it? Oh, that would look beautiful on a resume. But even just this experience, though, because you think about out of hundreds of thousands, only one is going to get that opportunity. But this is giving you, you know, such a great experience that will last, obviously, a lifetime. But you've been preparing for this. It feels like your entire professional career, Chef. I've stalked you just a little bit. So here in Mississippi, where have you been working and spending your, your time training as a chef or, or you know, uh, working as one that's giving you all the all the on-hand experience for competition like this? Well, honestly, my culinary began, my culinary journey, excuse me, began with my grandmother, Juanella Carter Odom. She had two restaurants in Columbia, Mississippi, where I'm from. Um, so I've basically been cooking all of my life. I was cooking in my dorm room at Alcorn State University. But um, once I got out of culinary school, I graduated from August Escoffier School of Culinary Arts, um, I started out at the Costa Casino at IP Casino. Um, that's a fine dining Italian restaurant. And from there, I was the inaugural pastry chef for White Pillars on Biloxi Beach. I was Tony Nelson, King of Cheese Steaks head uh, caterer. Um, and just, just a lot of private chef and events I cooked for the family of uh, Dr. Thomas Thurdivant. Um I've had a lot of – my resume is extensive. But the thing that was most fulfilling was when I – stepped out on my own and opened my own catering company. Like, there's nothing like working for yourself. Absolutely, I agree with that. And then, too, just understanding that other kind of pressure that comes with being your own boss. And I think that's kind of the difference with Hell's Kitchen is Gordon Ramsay puts that, you know, iconic kind of pressure on his contestants, unlike other, you know, games or, or chef shows sort of do. But, I mean, it feels like if you've worked the line at a casino, you probably know what pressure is all about, huh? Absolutely. I mean... Well, I'll be honest, Hell's Kitchen is a little more fast-paced than your regular kitchen because, of course, you know, we're filming. You have to bang everything out. But the thing, that is one of the lessons I learned. Like, I could really cook under pressure. Um, like, you got him standing there looking at you. You know, you got all those customers out there dining, looking at you. You got eight other females standing beside you, looking at you. So it was just, it's the pressure I can honestly say you could compare me to an olive. You know, you got to press it, you got to beat it, and you get that beautiful olive oil or a diamond. You got to you gotta press a diamond before you get that beautiful diamond. It starts out as a rock, and it becomes the most beautiful thing. So that pressure honestly made me that, that olive oil, that diamond. Like, I, I can make it. I, I, I got beaten. I was pressed, but I made it. But you made it, and you're still making it. So there's still um, some episodes left in this particular season. It airs on Thursday night, so that'd be tomorrow night at 7 p.m. on Fox. I know you're battling for a top spot. So how many more spots are there till the end, uh, according to where we're at now? I know you can't give anything away, but set the stage for well, us. Where right are you now, at now? 
Right now, we're going into episode five tomorrow, and only three people have went home. So that is still uh, 15 people left. Gotcha. To get to number one. Yeah. To get to number one. What has been, over the last three or four episodes, what's been your, I guess, either standout episode or your most favorite or most memorable? Um, For me, my standout, the most definitely, I got all the messages and from positive to negative, um, was the brunch challenge. Because, for one, I got to show them what we really do in Mississippi. We fry foods down here. You, you got to know how to fry chicken. So, for me to jump and save brunch as far as frying all the chicken and to have Chef Ramsey just turn around and say, Hey, Renisha, excellent, beautiful cook on the chicken. Yeah. That was, like, life-changing for me because, for one, that's one of my culinary idols. So, for him to recognize me and know my name, that probably was the, the, the best moment for me. Probably the worst moment was um, last week with my pizza dip. I deconstructed a pizza. I was trying to go out the box. Chef Ramsey told me I went past Pluto. But I had too much cheese. If it wasn't so much for the cheese, I would have gotten a point. So I would say that kind of was my discouraging moment. But other than that, everything has been just life-changing. Like, it's just, it, whether it's good or bad, it's still a moment. So that's what I take from this whole experience. Good or bad, it's still a moment. I was there. Yes, and it was a a teachable moment and one that you can learn from and then put the pizza dip on your menu there for your your business. And I'm sure your your catering clients will will eat that up and enjoy it. With Gordon Ramsay, though, is he a teddy bear all when cameras are not rolling? Or is he that kind of like, you know, intense 24 hours a day? Actually, it's. And it's not so much as the cameras. He's very passionate about food. So, you know, with this being a, a multi-million dollar business, you have to take it super seriously. Like, you do not have room for error. This man has 16 Michelin stars. So with someone standing there with those type of accolades, he wants the best for you. So it's not just so much as the cameras, but at the same time, he is intense, but behind closed doors, he's teaching you. He's making sure you know he really wants you to win. If all 18 of us could have won, he would have let us win. You see what I'm saying? But somebody, you know, 17 of us got to go. Can't tell you which 17. But he's like a father figure. You know how when your dad a a teach you things and may scold you, but at the same time he takes you in and makes sure you're loved and makes sure you got it. So I would honestly say he's very intense, but at the same time it's for a reason. So no, he's just not walking around you all, you know, face off grunts up and, you know, barking down at you. But when it's time to go, it's time to go. And when he gets in that mode, he's in that mode. As long as you keep him on, on, on a steady tempo, he's good. If you ever pay attention, when we're doing good in the kitchen, he's not on us. But as soon as you drop the ball, that switch, that, that switch gets flipped. So to answer your question, no, he's not like that all the time, but he is like that. And if you ever worked, and I think everyone, Renisha, should have to work in food service at some point and see it back of the house and how stressful and what it takes to actually get you that beautiful plate uh, to your table, you would appreciate it a lot more. Mm-hmm. That That is definitely um, for sure. Um, but tell us about your business because you are talking to, you know, all 82 counties here on Good Things, and we love to support local. And we got to remember, too, catering is considered local. So where are you mm-hmm. located and what do you serve up best? I am located in Columbia, Mississippi. Right now, I'm still in the private chef sector. I'm looking into getting a brick and mortar, but hey, is that what guys understand? It takes money. <laughs> Investors, hello. I hope y'all listening. Um, but right now, I'm serving um, fine dining soul food. That's that's my goal. Um, you know, we love us some collard greens and all that kind of stuff. But why not make it look fancy? Why not put on some good clothes and you know go eat some good soul food? So right now. I'm specializing in Southern cuisine with a fine dining flair, but I'm also still, I have that that, that Cajun Creole in me, too, because, hey, we're right across the street from Louisiana, so if you can't cook a good seafood dish, something is wrong with you. So um, I'm actually in Columbia. Um, I'm available anytime you need me. Just book me. My website is www.chefrenisha.com. That's my booking website. Also, you can reach me at chefrenisha at gmail.com. Or 601-740-0335. I am available and I am ready for y'all. I'm ready to feed Mississippi. That's my goal. Well, we're ready to see you come up tomorrow night, 7 p.m. on Fox, as you continue to battle for one of the top spots there on Gordon Ramsay's Hell's Kitchen. Chef Connerly, it was a pleasure getting to know you. I'm sure this isn't the last time we will chat on good things. And good luck, but already congratulations. Congratulations and good luck, all wrapped up in one. Thank you so much, Miss Rebecca. And anytime you want to invite me again on your show, I am happy. I'm so grateful. 
to be noticed. Thank you for even just having me here. This is so big. I'm fighting back tears right now. So if you keep hearing me get quiet, I'm actually fighting back tears because it's like, hey, Mama, I have made it. <laughs> you have made it, girl, and this is sky's just a limit. So you go on and win that thing and do your thing, and we will catch up uh, soon. Thank you so much. All right. Love y'all. Love you, Mississippi. Stick with us. We got more good for you coming.